Okay, so we got our train XV80 here. The burners were firing up, but uh, nothing would happen. And I wasn't getting any error codes. And um, so there's the blower motor. I checked it. Um, it was, it spins, all that. Right now the furnace is, power to the furnace is off. There's no problems, but the fan wasn't turning on. Um, so after doing some searching online, I, I checked to see if power was going to the, um, to the, to the circuits on the back of the fan here, essentially where everything's plugged in. So I'm going to unplug it. Just a couple of clips it's plugged in. Just unclipping it. I unclipped the big one. The small one. They're on the top and bottom, the clips. So sticking a multimeter in here into the white and black, I believe it was. I got, um, when I turned on the power to the furnace, I saw that I had 120 through a multimeter to there. Anyway, there it is back there. And those two screws on the back are what's holding it on there. But also in here, it's difficult to get to, is that, which has to be loosened for that to come off. Once you loosen that, take those two screws out, which is difficult. And this is all very itchy stuff. So you may want to use some gloves. Um, I've looked at taking off the side cover, but if I feel it wraps right around the back and feels like I'm taking apart the entire structure of the furnace and it is possible to do without. So you can remove that back plate after taking those screws out. Like I said, the bolts out in the back, um, those two bolts that you can, are visible on the back and loosening this in here. And I can't remember what those sizes are yet, but I'll put it on here. So hang on. Okay, so now I've got those two bolts out in the back, almost all the way out, they're completely loose. And I did it with a quarter inch, um, quarter inch ratchet. And then I could just get it in there and then I did the rest by thumb and finger. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty easy. Now to get this one, which is much more difficult. And also you do not want to drop your tool so that it ends up down inside the fan. So be very, very, very careful. I will use a closed end so it loops right around the top of the bolt. Um, um, <clears throat> wrench or spanner. Okay, so it's a 7 16 wrench. And as you can see, I got it in there. It gives you just enough room to do some slight turns. I did it till it felt a bit loose, and now it feels like my cover will now come off this wrench off. And remove this. connection in there you see the blue and red wire now I'm not sure if I can get a good camera angle on it sorry for the on it. Uh, it's, oh yeah there's a connector in there and so you can just see the and I'm gonna unclip that and pop it in. okay Okay, so mostly by feel, I got my hand in there, felt the clip, and got it to come on down. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. Okay, now I've already did a temp fix on this, but I have 
other pictures or video that show. So there is a um, an electrical component that goes here, a thermistor, which I believe is a resistor. Um, and so what we need to do is I'll pull this, this comes out, this circuit board comes out with a couple of screws, two screws and a little clip, which um, you can pop this whole thing out. And then uh, what I've done is the old <clears throat> thermistor disintegrated into my hands and uh, the fix I'd read was to just if you tie these two together, the two legs of the thermistor, you can bypass it and basically it was acting as a surge protector. So I've, as a temp fix, while I was waiting for my new thermistor to arrive, I've bypassed the surge protection. And now what I'm gonna do is remove that and put in a new thermistor by soldering it in to the board. Okay, so here I'm just at <clears throat> I'm just gonna take the board out with a couple of Phillips head screws. There's one. The other one's over here. Okay, this piece here has to be slipped together and, and um, or pressed together with, I used needle nose the first time, but it never really popped through when I put it back, so I'm just conveniently just gonna pop this out now. Take my screws off here. Okay. Now underneath the board, you can see here and here. That's where my thermistor goes through and you can see that it's discolored and burnt and, um, but that was the way it was prior to when I jerry-rigged it to work until my parts got here um, a few days ago. Um, so maybe you can see little bit better the thermistor which is right or thermistor which was right there that crumbled to bits and then I just soldered it together <clears throat> to make a connection um, so here's the new ones um, Got it right off Amazon. Um, SL32-1R030. Um, is what I looked for. So this is going to be soldered in through my board. And this is was sitting in here was what disintegrated in my fingers and was cracked all to bits when I pulled it out and the thermist fan was not working. So now I'm going to unsolder this and put in the new one. Okay, so those are the legs. I got them through. There it is in the circuit board as it was. I'm just going to cut those legs off and solder it um, gently. By the legs that were through here were bent, bent over lightly and soldered and they had a little bit of a coating on them. Um, I ended up having to use a heavy duty old school soldering iron to, to break the uh, solder on these but I'll be using a very light one. Um, I can't remember how many watts this one is, but it's uh, good for circuit boards and I'll be putting, using that one to finish it off. 
Okay, so I've soldered this in now. And there it is in there. And hopefully this works. Okay. Just finished putting in the uh, electronics behind the fan. You can hear it turning on the burners. goes. Fan motor working.